Well, what's up, everyone? My name is Channing. If you're on the stream, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, we've been promoting this class for the last couple of weeks. Had about 30 people sign up. So very excited about today's class. And I'm sure a lot of you are going to be excited as well because today we're going to be talking about preparing for home ownership. That's right. Um, for those of you that don't know me, my name's Channing Moore. I own a mortgage brokerage called Bayou Mortgage in Louisiana. Many of you that are watching this or on my personal page uh, are the people that signed up, um, probably know me and know that we operate in Louisiana. For the rest of you, we're still passionate about helping you and helping you understand and navigate this home buying process um, so that you can own your own house. And there's a lot of information out there. There's a lot of bad information out there. Just this week or last week, uh, there was information circling about a 40-year mortgage that doesn't really exist. So we want to help. We want to help you understand this process. So that's exactly what we're going to do in this class today is we're going to talk about it. How do we prepare for home ownership? Now, before we jump in, just understanding that being prepared is going to make your home buying process a lot easier. It's going to make things a lot easier for you. It's going to make things smoother. And, you know, when you understand kind of how the beginning of this process works, because if we cover it, you know, from start to finish, this video will be three hours like it was the last time we tried to do that. And we don't want to do that. We want to we want to stick to 30 minutes, 45 minutes, an hour maybe um, on preparing for home ownership and what that looks like. And so we're going to focus today on kind of the how to get started until, um, the the house hunting right and going under contract and then we'll do another one where we kind of explain more fully what happens once you go under contract so today our purpose is aimed for those of you who are trying to figure out how to get this thing going where does this thing go how do we get started all of that good stuff and so as you can see on the screen um which you'll see me look over here occasionally because i'm looking at my notes but you're going to see on the screen that that we're going to talk about getting your finances in order we're going to talk about how to find the right lender. We're going to talk about getting pre-approved. We're going to talk about how to find the right realtor. And we're going to give you some house hunting tips and tricks. And then we're going to end this with a question and answer, with the Q&A session. Um, for those of you that are in the live stream, that are on the live chat, um, we sent an email out about an hour ago to everyone that registered and even those that didn't to remind you, hey, we're getting started. So if you're checking us out that way or if you're checking us out on social, welcome. Um, if you want to be in the live chat, um, you'll need to click the link that we sent you to be able to uh, be in the live and, and do comments. If you do comment on social, Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, wherever, um, I will do my best to go back and answer them once I see them. Uh, if you don't give StreamYard permission, I won't be able to see your name or anything. So uh, just a couple of housekeeping items before we jump in. So that's where we're going. That's what we're going to talk about in today's video. So let's go ahead. Let's keep this train rolling. And let's talk about the first thing. Let's talk about getting your finances in order. I want to talk about what does that mean? What does that look like? Let's make this a little bigger. There we go. So the first thing when it comes to getting your finances in order is we need to understand your credit score and how it affects your mortgage. Now, I know that a lot of people understand that their credit score has an impact on their loan. And it does, right? Your credit score is going to determine things like your interest rate. It's going to determine what loan programs you qualify for. It's going to determine uh, your, your if you're paying like a conventional loan, it's going to determine your mortgage insurance. It's going to determine how much you pay in homeowners insurance. It can even, it, it, it's just, it's, it, it's a big deal. Your credit history, your credit score is a big deal. And your credit score is calculated basically by how well you've paid back your debts. And so things like your credit card balances, your payment history, what, you know, those are all going to be factors. How many new accounts you've added, um, the, the mix of your accounts, those are all going to be factors in your credit score and how that all works. And so um, when you understand your credit score and how it affects your mortgage, that's gonna be one of the key pieces of this puzzle is you need to know what that looks like. Now you can check your own credit score through a company called myfico.com. I don't have an affiliate link. I wish I did because I recommend them all the time, but um, myfico.com is gonna actually be the only place you can get your mortgage scores without having a lender pull your credit. And we'll talk about that later at the end. But um, so you'll be able to check your scores, you'll see your reports. Now there is annualcreditreport.com, which will give you a free copy of your report, but it will not give you your scores. And so things like credit karma and stuff like that, those are not true scores, those are not true mortgage scores. And so sometimes they can do more harm than good. Um, 
so once you understand where your scores are and how and now that you know how it kind of affects your mortgage you'll be able to understand you know like when you sign up with us we're going to send you emails we're going to call you we're going to talk with you about different loan programs you'll have a better idea of what loan programs you may call for if your credit score is a 620 or a 720. Um, and so next after that, this is like the really, this is so important. And so many people miss this step is budgeting for your new home. We ask people all the time, like, what's your budget? And they say, I don't really know. Well, you want to set a budget for your new home and you want to understand and make sure that it's a it's a workable budget, right? And so I don't have the time to to like jump into budgeting and how that all works, but you want to know what your monthly payment budget is. You want to know how much you can afford. You want to know what you need your payment to be around. A lot of people base it around what they pay in rent. Um, other people come up with the number on their own. And so that's going to determine how much house you need to buy. And so, you know, in an environment today where rates are a little higher than they used to be and insurance is a little higher than it used to be. It may mean that you purchase less house or you may have to be more comfortable spending a hundred or two or three hundred dollars more a month than you were were planning on and so everybody's situation is going to be different everybody's reason for moving is going to be different there isn't really any one size fits all and so once you understand your budget and your credit score now it's time to save for a down payment because you'll know oh i'm gonna have to go fha i need three and a half percent down Oh, I, you know, I have a decent credit score and I'm going to buy in a rural area. Maybe you don't need a down payment, right? Still a good idea to save some money to help with closing costs and appraisals and things like that. But getting your finances in order, per, you know, that whole deal, that whole thing is going to be designed to help you um, know exactly what you're getting yourselves into. So let's jump in and let's talk about finding the right lender and getting pre-approved. Now I'm putting this first because one of the things that most people do is they typically end up calling a realtor first and they, cause they find a house that they like and they want to go see a home. Well, that's often a misguided approach because unless you're paying cash, which if you are, you're probably not watching this video. Um, you need to know what you can afford before you start looking at houses. And so we're going to talk about tips for finding a reputable lender. We're going to talk about how to understand the mortgage pre-approval process. And we're going to talk about how to compare mortgage rates and terms, which I think is, man, very, very important. And so, um, you know, when it comes to finding a reputable lender, you, you don't, the biggest mistake that I think home buyers make is they only shop with one lender and that includes us. And so we're never going to tell someone not to shop for their mortgage. We're never going to tell someone that they shouldn't, um, you know, shop with other lenders. Now I think we'll win, but that's, that's besides the point. Most home buyers only shop with one lender and that can cost you thousands of dollars, not just up front, but over five years, over 10 years, if you stay there that long. And so when it comes to finding a reputable lender, it needs to be a good blend of someone who has good rates and fees, someone who provides a high level of customer service, meaning you can reach them, you can talk to them, you can communicate with them and they're communicating proactively with you. Uh, they're get, explaining things to you, right? So if, if, if you apply with someone and they haven't walked you through what that means or what that looks like or what they're doing, how they're researching or you know what they're doing with this information that you've given them, then you, you know that, that's kind of something to take a step back for because you should be informed every step of the way. And so when you're looking at finding a reputable lender, that's, that's step number one. What are their fees? What are their rates? How do they communicate? How is their customer service? And then do they know what they're doing? You know, look at their reviews. What are their customers saying? Do they not have reviews? Are they new? Like what's going on? And so I'll tell you this, the, the more difficult your loan is, so maybe you have lower credit, maybe you've had job issues, maybe you don't have a down payment, you know, maybe you've had past credit issues and, and there are things like that. The more complicated your file gets, the more you want an expert, right? Pretty much if you have an 800 credit score and you've been on your same job for 20 years and you're putting 20% down, a robot can close that loan. Like it's such a simple, quick process for somebody that's in that situation. But if you have a more difficult loan, working with someone who knows what they're doing becomes key. And if they make it seem like it's going to be sunshine and rainbows the whole time, that's a big red flag. Because the truth is, the more difficult your credit history, the more difficult your past mistakes, the more difficult the process is going to be. And that doesn't mean that it has to be horrible, but it's going to, it's going to require more from you. And so your willingness and ability to do that is going to determine a lot about the experience that you have. So... We want to look at their fees. We want to look at their rates. We want to look at their service. We want to look at their reviews. And we want to look 
Are they even in my state, right? Are they even in my region? And so a lot of people work with a big lender that's in Michigan and they don't know how property taxes or insurance works in Louisiana. Those are all things you have to consider. And we're going to talk about that in step number three. So let's understand the mortgage pre-approval process. So the mortgage pre-approval process is like a dress rehearsal, right? You want to walk through every single step of what you're about to go through up front so that number one, you can be prepared and to minimize and eliminate anything that could possibly kill the deal after you've already paid money. Right. And so there are inspections that are three to five hundred dollars. There are appraisals that are five to seven hundred dollars. There are all these things that you're going to have to spend money out of pocket on. And if you don't go through the pre approval process correctly, you're putting yourself in a position where you're going to lose that money potentially, especially again if you have a more difficult loan. And so when it comes to the pre approval process, if it doesn't feel like a dress rehearsal, if you just clicked a couple of buttons and then out came your letter, that's a big red flag. If you just talk to someone and they give you a pre-approval letter and they haven't pulled your credit or worse, they haven't collected any of your documents, that's a big red flag. And so during that mortgage pre-approval process, good lenders, reputable lenders, there's lots of them, are going to say, hey, send me your pay stubs, send me your bank statements, send me your documents, and then we'll get you pre-approved. And not everyone wants to do that. In fact, just today, we had a client tell us not to contact them again because we wanted these documents up front to give them a pre-approval and they just wanted us to give them the letter. And we're just not going to do that, right? I've been in the game long enough to know it serves no one. It doesn't serve you. It doesn't serve any of the agents or the seller to generate pre-approvals like that. And so that's that's what it is with the mortgage pre-approval process. If it doesn't feel like a practice session for the underwriting process, then again, you need to be concerned. Now, number three, let's talk about how do we compare mortgage rates and terms? Now, this is a big one, especially right now because of where rates are. Things have gotten fairly competitive, right? And so everybody wants to find the best deal because the rates are up, you know, and different things like that. And so I didn't prepare like a screen share, but I have a video on YouTube. If you're interested, I can send it to you where I walk you through a fee worksheet and a loan estimate to show you how to specifically compare mortgage rates and terms. So if you want that, drop a number one or drop in the comments, hey, please send that to me. Because if you're trying to shop your lender, you really need to do it correctly. You really need to make sure that you're comparing apples to apples. Because case in point, you can call a lender and they can say, oh, I'll give you a 5.5% interest rate. But what they're not telling you is it will cost you $10,000. And the lender that you're shopping them with could probably also give you a 5.5% interest rate. Maybe it would only cost you $6,000 with them. And so a lot of people don't know. I keep hitting this and it's, I don't want it to turn off. Um, a lot of people don't know that when it comes to interest rates, it's not just the rate. The fees and the rates are like married together. And so your rate determines your fees, your fees determine your rate nine times out of 10. And so you can't just look at the interest rate. On the flip side, you also, there's going to be a lot of fees on the fee worksheet from the title company for the appraisal, for your interest, for your interest charges, for your insurance charges, for your property tax charges. And there's no penalty for any lender. There's really no penalty for them under disclosing that as long as they catch it before you go under contract. And so what we see a lot of times is lenders will underestimate on insurance, they'll underestimate on taxes because they want to win the deal. And so they'll say, hey, look, their rate's lower, but look, I am $3,000 cheaper, not often the case, but it's because they estimated $1,000 a year for your insurance and it's actually going to be $3,000 a year. And so every lender has a different strategy. We choose to be upfront and honest about what it's going to cost because we want, I mean, look, your insurance is going to be what it's going to be. It doesn't matter what lender you work with. Your property taxes are going to be the same no matter what lender you work with. So these are the types of things that become important when you're shopping and comparing your mortgage to make sure that you're not getting yourself into a situation where you think it's cheaper, but then it's not. And we have seen, guys, we have seen countless times. I mean, honestly, countless times people have come to us and said, yeah, I was going to use them because they were cheaper. And then when they got the contract and I went through underwriting, I got denied because my insurance went up $2,000 a year. Well, we see this every day. We could have told you that was going to happen. Um, and so I'm not trying to scare anybody or anything. I'm just saying like there are a lot of charges on the fee worksheet that you're given by your lender 
one of the reasons why we do a video every single time we send one so that we can explain what everything is and where it's coming from. Because I would love for you to have a thousand dollar insurance a year. And if you have that, and if you have an actual quote for that, we'll change our price. But if we get a quote and it comes back $3,000 a year from three different agents and you don't have a quote, well, we're going to know that like this is the premium and that's going to make your payment $250 more a month than you thought it was going to be. So it's really, really important to compare rates in terms with your, uh, when you're shopping for that. And again, I have a full video where I break all this down. If that's something that you're interested in, just drop it in the comments. Hey, I'm interested in that. All right, let's talk about tips for finding the right real estate agent. Um, when it comes to working with the realtor, when it comes to, um, I'm sorry, I'm just checking my notes here. Oh, I see some comments. Uh, Latanya says, send to me, Trinita, send that to me. Interested. I'm going to get that to you guys. Thank you, John. Thanks everyone for dropping that in the comments. I will get you that video. Uh, and allow me to buy some time to catch up on my notes here. Cause I was just, I was rolling. Um, okay. So let's talk about, you know, everybody knows that, you know, you have the option to work with a real estate agent when it comes to purchasing a house, uh, for buyers, the cost of the realtor is typically built into what the seller is being charged unless it's a for sale by owner. And so most buyers tend to work with real estate agents. And I think it's a great thing because it really helps you navigate the process, especially if it's your first time, they're going to help you negotiate. They're going to help you with the inspections and they're going to be there. They're going to help you explain things. They're, they're, they're very much like the glue that, that, that kind of keeps all of the, the different parties together, right? Especially a good one. They're going to communicate well with everyone. And so they're going to help you find the right house. They're going to help you negotiate the best price and they're going to help you navigate the home buying process. And so let's talk about some qualities we need to look for in a real estate agent. And so one of the things really important is that they should be experienced and knowledgeable in the market that you're buying in because part of their job is to help you negotiate. And so that if they don't understand what the price of the homes are going for, if they don't understand that market, you may offer too much or you could offer too little and lose a house that you really like. And so knowledge of the local market is very, very important. Good communication skills. Can you reach them? Are they easy to talk to? Are they available to answer your questions? That's going to be the same for lenders, realtors, or anyone else that you ever do business with, right? We want people that will communicate well with us and explain to us what's going on. Um, and then are they available? Now, listen, there's this thing in our industry where people want you to be available 24-7. I would never tell you that a realtor is not a good realtor if they're not available 24-7. But are they reasonably available for you to be able to go and look at homes and to show you homes? You know, that's that's going to be another key consideration. And so when it comes time to like, who do you work with? Oftentimes, people tend to work with someone that they know that's a friend of theirs or that gets referred to them. But I would still encourage you, just like when you're working with a lender, to go look at their online reviews. Um, and compare that up and see how they they stack up. Do they have an online presence? Do they have reviews that you can go and look at? Um, but it's also really important that you feel comfortable working with them. And so if, if you don't, then you may want to find someone that that you do feel comfortable working with. And just kind of a note of caution here, don't don't drag a realtor around you know, for six months or three months or a month even and have them show you 10 or 15 different homes. And then the day they can't show you a home, you call another agent since they were available and you go under contract with them. That's not fair, right? And I know we don't live in a fair world, but like we want to work with good people. Good people wouldn't do that. And so you want to work with, you want to treat them fairly because listen, nobody, us, the, the realtor, no one is compensated unless they close a deal. And so they're spending gas money and their time to show you homes and if you don't really, hopefully they don't have to show you 20 homes because we're going to talk about how to have, you know, how to nail down where you really need to be. But if, if that's the case, you know, there should be some loyalty there um, when it comes to finding and working with the right realtor. So when it comes to working with an agent, um, you need to communicate and, and establish clear expectations. You need, you should have an understanding. We're going to talk about this of what your expectations are, like when you're available to view homes, right? When, you know, what type of homes you want to look for and when you're going to be available to communicate with them. Now, most realtors can text with you. They can do all these different things, but um, it's just really important that you establish up front what you're looking for from them, right? And 
be clear about your budget and your priorities. That's really, really important. And a lot of frustration happens when you look at 20 homes and you don't find any that you like, but we don't really have it nailed down where your budget is and where you're looking. And so if you've done what we've talked about in this class and you've established a home buying budget, you know your options, then you've got to get clear on your home buying criteria. And so when it comes to setting your, um, that's next. So we'll talk about that in just a second. Um, so helping them by understanding your budget priorities and being open to compromise. Listen, your first home is not most likely going to be your forever home. And so you're trying to get something where you can begin to build wealth. Maybe you use it as a rental later. Uh, that's going to work for your family. You're very rarely, unless you're rich, going to find a house that has everything you want it to have, right? If you have thousands and thousands of dollars in excess in your budget every month, then sure, you're willing to increase your budget to find exactly what you want. That's great. Most time, most first time home buyers we work with, that is not their situation. So you have to be willing to compromise and, and, and do those things. And so that that's going to lead me into house hunting tips and tricks. And so you need to set a clear criteria for your home search, including your budget, your desired location, and your must have features. Now I'll tell you, if your must have features is a list of 20 things, you've probably got too many. Let's get three. Let's, let's rank them in order right? And, and establish, here's what's most important to me. Now, I'm not saying you can't buy what you want. I'm saying that if you have a limited budget and a very specific set of needs, you're putting yourself in a tough spot. So one of two things has to change. You either usually have to increase your budget to get everything you want, or you have to kind of take back a, that, that list of required things uh, that you need. And so, um, prioritizing your criteria and being flexible as you search for the right home is really important. It's going to eliminate a lot of frustration on your part as well, because at that point you've looked at 20 homes, you don't like anything, all the things in the homes that you do that do check all the boxes are $50,000 more than you want to spend. Well, now we're at a crossroad. We either got to give something up or we got to increase the budget, you know, by 200, $300 a month, which is not feasible for a lot of people. And so, um, really important. Now, when it comes to um, house, you know, looking at houses, right? So you want to make a, a checklist, I think was is a great idea of questions to ask and things to look for. Well, we can help you with that too. And your realtor can help you with that. They're probably going to point those types of things out for you as well. Um, if they're a good agent while you're going through the house, um, you want to schedule your showings, you know, in advance, preferably that way your realtor has time to show them to you. Uh, you want to be flexible. Uh, and it's really, it's, it's really helpful if you can line out and schedule it so that you can see, see multiple homes in the same day. Um, that way you could get, especially when you first start looking, I just feel like this gives you a great opportunity to really see what's out there. And if you go look at five different houses, you really get a feel for like what's available in your price range. Um, you want to take notes as you're doing, the, as you're touring the houses, write down a pros and cons list, write down things you liked, write down things you didn't like, right? This is all basic stuff. If you watched HGTV and these people that go out and they house on, this is all stuff they do, right? Um, so you want to take notes. You want to even maybe take photos. Um, if there's a photo of something that's not in the listing pictures. Um, and then, you know, there's things that can be easily fixed. Paint can usually be easily fixed. Um, you know, there's lots of things that aren't super expensive, that can usually be easily fixed. And so if the house has the, you know, the, the layout and the different things that you're looking for, you know, I would advise, Hey, don't pass it up over ugly carpet or paint, but everybody's different, but that's just me. Um, okay. So now that you've kind of understand those things, now you want to prioritize locations and neighborhoods, right? And so if you pigeonhole yourself into, I only want to live in this neighborhood, well, unless you have unlimited budget, you may be looking for a while or you may be waiting for a while. And so where do you want to be and what neighborhoods are you willing to live in? Um, you know, in our town, it's smallish. So pretty much commute times are not really a thing. But for those of you in bigger cities, you know, obviously commute, you know, amenities, all of those things play factors in the decision that you make. And so you want to you want to prioritize the importance of of that, you know have an understanding already going into it of like, here's the areas we're willing to look in, um, all that good stuff. So now once you've found a house, you're going to make an offer, right? Your agent, if you're working with one is going to help you make that offer. They're going to want you to make a competitive offer. And so a lot of times what I see is people want to offer like $20,000 less than the house is listed for. 
listen, just because the home is expensive doesn't mean they're going to take these massive discounts. Now, sometimes your realtor will say, I believe this property is overpriced. Let's go in here. And the thing is, people have sentimental value on their homes. And so you never want to offer more. But if you offer too low, and this is especially true as the market was really hot a couple of years ago, you're not going to win. And you're just going to keep making offers on houses and you're going to keep losing. And then eventually you're going to feel hopeless and, and, and you know, all that you're going to feel frustrated. And so um, when you make an offer, you want to make a competitive offer that's based on research of market data um, and then keeping in mind the things you need. If you need $6,000 in closing costs, well, that means that's 6,000. If the seller agrees, that's 6,000 less dollars they're going to make on your on their home. So you probably need to make a full price offer or close to it, right? Every market's different. You know, in this market, sellers are a lot more willing to pay closing costs than they were the last two years. But those are things that you have to consider. You know, um, if it's competitive, if it's still a competitive and there's going to be other offers, obviously, you know, the less you can ask for closing costs, the more down, the, you know, the better you make your application look, the easier and bigger, bigger chance you have of winning. Um, faster you can close different things like that. Now, once you make that offer, there's pretty much three responses. Yes, maybe, or no, right? And maybe would be considered like a counter offer. And so the seller can come back and say, hey, thanks for the offer. We're not willing to accept that. Here's what we're willing to accept. At that point, you can accept it. You can make another counter offer or you can walk away. Um, usually if they make a counter offer uh, and you haven't done some low ball insulting offer, they're telling you they're willing to work with you. And so a lot of people don't understand that part of the process, but it's really important. And I will say that this is how to avoid common mistakes when house hunting and, and all that stuff. This is the part where emotions tend to get involved for the rest of the process. Take the emotion out of the negotiation. You got to realize that the seller probably has sentimental value to their home. You have emotions, you know, tied up in this because you either really want the home or you want a good deal or whatever. And so if a seller counter offers, if they do like, that doesn't mean that, you know, they're, they're being greedy or whatever. Right. So it's really important to take the emotions out of this part of the process as a first time home buyer. Uh, and the, the more flexible you can be, the better. Um, I'm not telling you to overpay. I'm just telling you to be flexible. I'm telling you to be understanding. Um, there's a whole lot more that happens. We can't dive into it today, but there's a whole lot more that happens once you go under contract, you know, you're going to have inspections, right? And this is the time period where you send a guy out licensed home inspector. He's going to look at the house and tell you if there's any issues, if there's any problems with the house, that's going to open up a negotiation period where you can ask for things to be fixed. And so if you swing for the fences, on the offer, man, it's going to make them a lot less willing to fix things. And then the deal might end up falling apart in either way. And so just be flexible, be mindful, um, and understand that this ain't, this isn't like car dealerships when they mark $10,000 off of trucks, which they don't even really do that anymore uh, in this environment. But, um, you know, home prices typically appreciate, um, despite what you hear on the news. So, these huge discounts, they just don't exist unless the house is overpriced from the get go. And your agent's going to tell you that they're going to do research and tell you that. And if they're not, you need to ask them to. Um, but yeah, so you can negotiate to get the best deal. They're going to give you a counter offer. If they say no, then that means that they probably didn't appreciate the offer that you made. Um, but yeah, so that is in a nutshell, kind of the first steps in building and preparing for home ownership. And I just kind of wanted to throw this last piece in there because a lot of people don't know, right? Like here's what happens once you're pre-approved and you're doing this house hunting thing. Like there's all these negotiations and stuff like that. And so when you go to close the deal, again, you're going to have home inspections. You're going to have appraisals. You're going to have, you know, to go through mortgage underwriting. You're going to have the title company do all this, you know, title work and stuff like that. We got videos on all this stuff. So when I send you guys the video for the um, explaining the closing costs and how to shop lenders, um, you'll get access to my channel, which has all this stuff on there. Um, so that's, that's pretty much the gist of, of what we have going on when it comes to preparing for home ownership. Now, I like to do things quickly. So if you're like me and you've enjoyed the session, thank you guys for joining, by the way. Um, before we jump into Q&A, and so those of you on the live stream, think of your questions because we're about to go into Q&A. If you want a shortcut, right? You don't want to watch hours and hours of me or some other mortgage lender tell you kind of what's going on. You want to put it all together quickly. 
uh, I'd like to invite you to book a, a strategy session with us. Doesn't mean we pull your credit. Doesn't mean we, you know, tell you to do all this stuff. We can, but what we do, it's a 15 minute call. We ask you questions based on what your situation is. We answer your questions. And then at the end, we'll kind of give you a roadmap of here's what's next. Most of the time that looks like when you're ready, let's do an application. Let's get you pre-approved and get you shopping for homes. If you're ready to do that within the next three months for everyone else, it's, you know, Hey, maybe work on this on your credit or maybe save up a down payment or call us back or, or we'll stay in touch, you know, for the next three months until you're ready, whatever that looks like. So if you would like to book a mortgage strategy session with us, um, we are licensed in the entire state of Louisiana. So for those of you watching that are in Louisiana, you want to buy a house, uh, all you have to do is go to this link and I'm sorry, it's long. I didn't have time to make a little fancy one that'll make it easier for you guys but it is buyyou-mortgage.com slash TY, that stands for thank you, slash Channing. So all you have to do is you can copy this link or you can, you know, I'll leave it up on the screen for a minute so that you guys can, um, and I'll, look, I'm going to drop it in the chat too so you can just copy it um, so that you can book a call with us. Um, Tori will go over all of this information with you. Um, and, and listen, we love this stuff, okay? So like you're, this is not some high pressure sales pitch. This is this that's not that's not what this is. Um, we are simply here to walk you through this, to, to walk with you and give you the advice that you need. If that means you're not buying a house for six months, that's not a problem for us, right? So I just dropped it in the comment section of like everywhere this video is streaming. So you should be able to just click the link if that's something that you want to do. Um, if not then that's fine too. Just keep watching the channel and we're going to keep doing stuff like this every two weeks to help you guys get educated on this process. And so um, now let's just, um, let's go ahead and jump into our Q and A. Um, if you guys on the live stream have any questions, please drop them in the comments. I'm going to pop over onto the socials really quickly so that I can make sure I'm not missing any questions for those that are not on the actual webinar live stream itself. Um, so I may hear an echo here in a second because I got to do this this way. Oh, no, we're already muted. So we're good. So I don't see anything on YouTube. What about Facebook? Not seeing anything on Facebook either. All right, guys. So let's see. Okay. John says, can you speak on mobile or modular homes versus a brick and mortar? mortar for a mortgage. Absolutely, John. This is a this is a big one. I need to do a whole separate video on this because we've been getting a lot of mobile homes lately. So the main differences in a mobile home when it comes to getting a mortgage is you're going to have an additional out-of-pocket expense, which is an engineer certification. And it's typically going to cost between four and six hundred dollars, usually closer to four than six, but you know, everyone's different and it depends on who's available in your area. We do have a national vendor that we work with that's generally right under $500 and they get them back fairly quickly. Uh, for local to Lake Charles, we have another guy uh, that we use and he's also very quick. So that's number one. Number two, this is especially true if you're in South Louisiana. South Louisiana, we would just define as I-10 or, or lower. Um, insurance on a mobile home is going to be really, really, really expensive. Um, we're, you know, we see them 2,500 to 7,000 and it really a year. And it really comes down to who will write the policy. So if you're stuck with, with citizens, which is the case for a lot of people, especially you get over, uh, into Homa and Thibodeau and stuff like that, those are going to be very expensive to the point that it's almost not worth it. May not be worth it. Other rates are going to be a little higher um, depending on your score. We do have a lender for some people that they don't really charge much more for a mobile home, but all of the other lenders do. So I guess in a nutshell is what I'm saying is that even though mobile homes are cheaper, they do tend to cost a little more. But if you're buying like a $100,000 single wide, it's probably still cheaper than buying a house. Um, John says, I have good news. Oberlin, Allen Parish. Um, yeah, so familiar with that. We were just over at, uh, we just drove through Oberlin uh, last week. We were up at Chico State Park camping with the kids. So those areas do tend to be a little bit better since it's not South Louisiana. Um, and then, of course, there are a lot of mobile homes for sale there too, which which we we do finance. And so we can do those FHA, VA, USDA if it's 2006 or newer, the model of the mobile home, or conventional. Um, so if it's in a flood zone, we only have one lender that will do them. But as long as it's not in a flood zone, 
we, we have multiple lenders that will do single wides or double wides. Um, so again, like all things, it just needs to be in good condition, move in ready. Um, you can't do a renovation loan on a mobile home, but, uh, but yeah, John, does that answer your question? I hope, hopefully that does pretty much the same can be a little bit more expensive is the gist of it. I don't see if anyone else has said anything. Dude, dude, dude. I'm just checking social here. Cool. Not in a flood zone. Great. John, I'd love to, I'd love to have you and Tori connect, um, so that you can, uh, get all your questions answered. But, um, but yeah, man, we do mobile homes. A lot of lenders don't, but we do. And I think we do them pretty well. We've, I think we have six or seven that we're doing this month. And I don't know if I, I don't think I did six or seven all of last year, um, just cause people weren't buying them, but, um, you know, they're pretty popular in Louisiana and we have great insurance agents that, that can get quotes on them and all that good stuff. So if you did it, man, would encourage you to book Tori will reach out. Um, and of course, if you have any questions, shoot me a DM. I'm not seeing any more questions. So I'm about to end the live stream. I'm going to give you guys a few minutes. If you have questions, uh, Miss Latanya or Chanita or any, anyone, um, if you have any questions, drop them in the comments. Otherwise, listen, if you book a call, we'll answer all your questions, right? And, uh, and we'll give you, we'll give you the steps on what to do next. So I'm going to give it about another minute if I don't see any more questions and then we'll end this thing. So for those of you who joined, thank you so much. For those of you who watch this later, uh, if you make this far, thank you again. Um, and yeah, we'd love to just talk with you and give you instructions on what to do next. All right, well, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it up. Thank you, John, for coming. Um, and thank everyone else for being here and asking questions and engaging. And we'll see you guys in a couple of weeks. We'll be we'll be launching our next our next class. So thank you all again.